Hello guys, now I'm going to discuss about lexical relation. Uh, what is lexical relation? Let's go to the definition of lexical relation. Lexical relation is culturally recognized pattern of association that exists between lexical units in a language. And lexical relation divided into eight topics. First is synonymy, and then antonymy, hyponymy, prototypes, homophones, and homony. Polysemy, metonymy, and collocation. Let's begin with the first subject. First is synonymy. What is synonymy? Synonymy is two or more words with very closely related meanings. For example, almost and nearly, big and large, cup and taxi, answer and reply. Okay. Uh, they can often, though not always, be substituted for each other in sentences. In the appropriate circumstances, we can say, what was his answer? Or, what was his reply? With much the same meaning. The idea of sameness of meaning used in discussing synonymy is not necessarily total sameness. There are many occasions when one word is appropriate in a sentence, but its synonym would be odd. For example, the reply word would be odd in this sentence. First sentence would be using answer word. Tony had only one answer correct on the test. And then the second sentence is Tony had only one reply correct on the test. You can see when you change the answer word into reply, it will sound odd. And synonymous forms may also differ in terms of formal versus informal uses. For example, the first sentence is, my father purchased a large automobile. And the second sentence, my dad bought a big car. From that two sentence, we know that uh, the second sentence with four synonymous replacements, but the second version sounds much more casual or informal than the first. Okay, now let's continue to the next subject. Next sub subject is antonymy. What is antonymy? Antonymy, two forms with opposite meanings are called antonymies. For example, alive and dead. Big and small, fast and slow, happy and sad, and true and false. Antonyms are usually divided into two main types, gradable uh, and non-gradable. Gradable antonyms such as fast and slow can be used in comparative sentence, for example, Cheetah is faster than lion. And the second sentence is Turtle is slower than rabbit. Non-gradable antonyms are so called complementary pairs. Compar comparative constructions are not normally used. We don't typically describe someone as deader or more dead than another. Examples of non-gradable pairs are first, male and female. Second would be married and single. 
and the third through and false okay now let's continue with the next subject okay the next subject is hyponymy what is hyponymy Hyponymy, when the, meaning, when the meaning of one form is included in the meaning of another, the, the relationship is described as hyponymy. For example, uh, animal and dog, vegetable and carrot, flower and rose. The concept of inclusion involved in this relationship is the idea that if an object is a rose, then it is necessarily a flower. So the meaning of flower is included in the meaning of rose, or rose is a hyponym of flower. Okay, guys, now continue to the next subject. The next subject is prototypes. What is prototypes? The concept of a prototype helps explain the meaning of certain words like bird, not in terms of component features. Uh, that has feathers and has wings, but in terms of resemblance to the clearest example. Well, the words canary, cormoran, dove, duck, flamingo, parrot, pelican, and robin are all equally co-hyponyms of the superordinate bird. They are not all considered to be equal, equally good examples of the category bird. According to some researchers, the most char characteristic instance of the category bird is robin. Other examples are uh, we are given the category label furniture. We are quick to rec recognize uh, chair as a better example than bench and stool. If we are given the category of clothing, we rec recognize shirts, shirts quicker than shoes. Uh, okay, then let's continue to the next topic. Homophones and homonym. What is homophones and homonym? Homophones and homonym. First, homophone. When two or more different written forms have the same pronunciation, they are described as homophones. For example, bear and bear. Meat and meat, flower and flower, two and two and two. <laughs> it has the same pronunciation. Right and right. And then we use the uh, then the homonym. We use the term homonym when one form. Uh, from written or spoken has two or more unrelated meanings. For example, uh, race from contest of speed and race with ethnic group. Bat, the flying creature, and bat used in sport, usually used in baseball bat, uh, used as baseball bat. And then left, past tense of leave and left. Opposite side of right, uh, like when you turn left. Uh, okay, let's continue to the next subject. The next subject is polysemy. Polysemy, when we ink counter two or more words with the same form and related meanings, we have what is technically known as polysemy. Uh, okay, and polysemy can be defined as one form, uh, from written or spoken. 
having multiple meanings that are related by extension. For example, the word head used to refer to an object on top of your body, froth on top of a glass of beer, person at the top of a company or department, and many other things. The word date is polysemous in terms of day and month, arranged meeting time, a social meeting time, and even a person uh, or dating someone you like. Okay, let's continue to the next uh, topic. Okay, let's begin with metonymy. What is metonymy? Mm -hmm. A type of relationship based on a close connection in, in everyday experience, which can be based on a container contents relation. For example, bottle and water can and juice. And second, the whole part relation. Uh, for example, a car and wheels, house and roof, or a representative symbol relationship. Uh, for example, king or, and crown, the president and the White House. Okay, then after that, using one of these words to refer to the other is an example of metonymy. For example, he drank the whole bottle, although it sounds absurd, literally. In essence, he drank the liquid, not the glass object. And the second example is the White House has nuns. And the third is giving someone a hand. Okay, let's continue to the last subject of this lexical relation. The next subject is collocation. Collocation. We know which words tend to occur with other words. If you ask a thousand people what they think of when you say hammer, more than half will say nail. If you say table, they'll mo they will mostly say chair, and butter elicits bread, needle elicits thread, and salt elicits pepper. One way we seem to organize our knowledge of words is simply on the basis of collocation or frequently, or frequently occurring together. Okay, that is the last subject. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and give a comment. I will answer if you mention uh, me. Goodbye. See you in the next video. Thank you.